Howdy. In the previous video, what we did is we talked about the foundations of disk washer and how that works, okay? So if you haven't seen that, definitely check that out first because I'm going to be utilizing all of that in order to answer these problems. So hopefully you have those sheets out. Hopefully you have those as your cheat sheets because now let's go ahead and put that into practice. So for number one, it says find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by y equals x squared in the x-axis rotated about the x-axis in between negative 2 and 3. Well, notice how y equals x squared, hey, that's one function, right? What I've got is I've got one function one function, and by the way, f to the n is just shorthand for function, of one function about an axis. And I have a function of x rotated about an x-axis. So your function equals your axis. So this tells me disk washer, okay? And this tells me the one function tells me pi r squared. And whenever you have one function, let's go ahead and bring those sheets back out, Whenever you have one function rotated about an axis, don't overthink those. It's just going to be the integral of pi times your function squared. And so, in this case, this one's going to be relatively easy. Volume will be the integral from negative 2 to 3 of pi times my f of x. In this case, f of x is equal to x squared times x squared squared which of course is just the integral from negative two to three of pi times x to the fourth dx, okay? So once again, one function about an axis, don't overthink those. Let's get a little bit tougher, okay? Let's try number two. Number two says, find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the curve y equals x cubed about the line y equals negative two in between zero and two. So whenever you're rotated about something that's not an axis, it's definitely good to uh, sketch it out. So let's see, uh, let's see what this gives us. So y equals x cubed is my function. Here's my f of x. f of x equals x cubed. And in between 0 and 2, so we kind of look probably something like that, right? Here's x and here's y. And we're going to rotate it. about y equals negative 2. So whenever I rotate this about negative 2, uh, hopefully your drawing is a little bit nicer, but it's going to look something like this. And here will be my disk. And here will be your radius. There's your r. Now, I don't know what r is. Okay, I don't. And the reason I know I'm using, by the way, the reason I know I'm using disk washer is of one function of x rotated about y equals negative 2, which is parallel to the x-axis. Function equals the axis, so I know that volume will be the integral of pi r squared. Okay, that'd be disk washer. Well, this in this case is a disk. Okay, but dang, I don't know. I don't know what r is, but I do know this. I do know the distance from negative 2 to the uh, x-axis as a distance of 2. And I also know that the distance at this point, if I took this distance right here, from the function down to your x-axis, remember that very first picture I ever drew for you, the distance from that point down to the x-axis is dependent on y. It's dependent on y, which is equal to, in this case, x cubed. And so if I want to find out what my radius, if I want to find out what my r is, r in this case is going to be this 2 plus x cubed. This r is going to be 2 plus x cubed. Therefore, your final answer in this one, volume, would be the integral. We're going from 0 to 2. They gave us those bounds earlier. So we're going from 0 to 2 of pi times my r squared. My r is 2 plus x cubed squared dx. Make sure, and be careful, I've seen this a lot too. This is not 4 plus x to the 6th. Make sure you expand that. 2 plus x squared, or 2 plus x cubed squared is 2 plus x cubed times 2 plus x cubed. You would need to FOIL this out. And when you FOIL that out correctly, it's going to be 4 plus 
And then we'd have 2x cubed plus 2x cubed, that's 4x cubed plus x to the 60x. And from here, go ahead and integrate, okay? All right, so now we've dealt with one function. We saw one about an axis. We saw one about a number. Let's now throw two functions into there. Now let's get it even harder. So for this next one, for number three, what we want to do is let's find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by x squared plus 2 and x plus 4 about the x-axis. Okay, well, notice what I've got here. I've got two functions now, I have two functions about um, an x-axis. So first off, the function does equal the axis, so I know that I'm using disk washer, um, and I have two functions. And so because I have two functions, that tells me that volume is equal to pi times the integral of big R squared minus little r squared. Now if you remember, two functions about an axis. Whenever you have two functions about an axis, these are easy to find big R and little r. And big R is just your top, little r is just your bottom. And you find top and bottom just like we did back with uh, area. So let's go through those same steps to find top and bottom. So the first thing we have to do was see where they intersect. All right, so we're going to do uh, x squared plus 2 is equal to x plus 4. I see that I have a quadratic, so let's move everything over to one side, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So I'm going to have x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. This factors into x minus 2 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. So I get 2 and negative 1, and by the way, those are going to be my limits of integration. We'll be taking that into account. And now to see which one's on top, this one's relatively easy to sketch, but let's just pretend. Worst case scenario, you have no clue to sketch it, that's okay. Let's look in between negative 1 and 2, right, my uh, limits of integration, and I'm going to compare the x squared plus 2 and the x plus 4. And I'm going to pick... I'm going to pick a random number in between negative 1 and 2. I kind of like 0. I think 0 would be easy in this case. And when I plug 0 into this each function, here I'm going to output a 2. And for your second function, that outputs a 4. 4 is bigger than 2. There's your top. And because this is rotated about the x-axis, that's your big R, which tells me at the x squared plus 2, right, so it tells me that my big R is x plus 4, and it tells me that my little r is x squared plus 2. Therefore, if I want to find the volume of this, volume v is equal to the integral, uh, our limits are from negative 1 to 2, of pi times big R squared, so this is x plus 4 squared, minus little r squared, that's x squared plus 2 squared, dx. Make sure you expand both of these correctly, combine like terms, and then integrate. All right, so now we've dealt with one function, both about an axis and a number. Now we've dealt with two functions about an axis. You can probably guess what's coming next. For our last problem, let's go ahead and do two functions about a number. So let's take a look here at number four. For number four, find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by y equals x, y equals x squared, about y equals 2. First off, I have a function of x um, about an x-axis. The function equals the axis, so I know I'm using disk washer. And then I have two functions. I have two functions, so I know that volume is equal to the integral of pi times, oops, pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Now, when I had two functions rotated about a number, Okay. When I had two functions rotated about a number, it was paramount to make sure that you sketch this correctly. That way we can more easily see what my big R and my little r is. So let's go ahead and sketch this. So we've got a line and a parabola, so fortunately it's not too, too bad, right? So we're going to have this line, that's y equals x, and the parabola is going to go like this. Okay. Now it's going to be relatively easy to find if you want to see where they intersect. They're going to intersect at 0 and 1. And that's just by setting them equal to each other, solve them for x. But here's your y equals x squared, and here's our y equals x. Now we're going to rotate this 
about y equals 2. So when I rotate it about y equals 2, this is going to be my little r, and then here is going to be my big r. So let's go ahead and find big r, and then we'll use the kind of the same logic to find little r. Now big r is from here down to your function. There is your big R. Okay, here's your big R. And I don't know what big R is, right? Because it's, it's kind of out floating in the middle of nowhere. So let's go ahead and actually see what we do know. I do know the distance from y equals 2 down to your x-axis is 2. And we also know that the distance from your function down to the x-axis, based on that very first picture I drew for y'all, is y, which because it's touching the parabola, that's y equals x squared. Which means that my big R, if I want to find my big R, that's going to be this distance 2 minus that x squared. So we have distance 2 minus that x squared. And likewise, little r. Notice how little r, the only difference is that my y now is only equal to x. And so for little r, it's a small circle right here, is what I'm focused on now, is going to be just 2 minus x. Now that I have that, to find volume v, volume is equal to the integral. Uh, I know that I'm going from 0 to 1. And if you have trouble finding that, just set those equal to each other, solve for x. 0 to 1 of, um, where am I at, of pi times my big R squared, big R, that's 2 minus x squared, squared, minus little r squared, that's 2 minus x squared, dx. And this is how you're going to deal with disks and washers.